Okay, to continue with our retina reflex S, now that I've got the shutter all fully assembled here, better turn my attention back to the body again, I suppose. So, we'll start at the beginning. The body is all been cleaned, all the grease and dirt and grit and rubbish is gone. So I start here with a bit of molybdenum and I'm lubricating those holes in the body and it just takes a tiny smear of this stuff I can't uh, stress that too much you just need hardly anything if it looks a bit dirty when you put the molybdenum on there it's probably just enough so this is for the end of film lock lever this beast that locks the film advance when the counter reaches number one and that's held pulled up into place with a fine coil spring and that in turn is held in place with a small clip here it is this lever is the release lever that releases the film advance when you press the shutter to unlock it so that you can wind on for the next exposure if you press the film release button that does the same job it presses on the same part So this screw on the top here, if I didn't throw it in the body that would have been a good thing. Come on out, here it is. The shaft we're screwing into is uh, threaded but it's split at the top. Squashed in slightly so it grips the screw which means that you can adjust the position of the screw which means that you can adjust the effective stroke of this when the shutter is being released so there we go, that's that component or those two components I should say now film advance shaft there's its metal bush and there's our sprocket So. Lubrication is wanted here, but first I'm checking that sh shaft to make sure that the disc on the end of this advanced shaft is firm. It's only crimped on, riveted on. And if it comes loose, not only does the advanced knob wobble about, which is a little bit disconcerting, but it can affect the position of the lock lever so that when you depress the shutter, Sometimes the lock lever may not be depressed far enough to move and at other times if you started to depress the shutter release but then changed your mind before firing the shutter you may find that the lock lever had already been released and so you could wind on and end up with a blank exposure. Right, so I've got some grease on there that goes in, this goes into the back of the body and I'll close the door making sure it doesn't run away here I need to make sure that my holes I can see through them where the screws are going to go and in an ideal world it would be that's probably quite good Now the springs are probably a bit tired, um, getting old like the rest of us. So I'm going to start that one third of a turn round from where it originally would have been. Let me just get that lock lever out of the way, just to give it a little bit of extra tension. 
The reflex cameras in particular, there's a lot of friction with the various components for cocking the shutter in the film advance and you commonly find that the advance lever is a little bit reluctant to return to the park position, particularly under its own steam. If you follow best practice and gently return the lever to the park position with your thumb, instead of just letting it fly back with a whack, then it actually works quite well. You know, I've just, uh, that's just turned enough to block my, where I need to put that screw in, so I'll just straighten that up. I'll turn that enough that the end of film lock lever will drop into place, which exposes that screw hole just nicely. Now at that position, that's only just slightly under return tension there. We're going to give that a whole full turn before we fit the lever. But that's a good place to start. Now what have I got to go on here next? These pieces, I think. So we'll move from here to the top of the camera. Just checking that the sprocket, the take-up spool is down on that shaft. That's good. Now here, we start with the clutch. The clutch has three components. And since I haven't got the stuff in front of me, I'll explain what I'm going to do, and then I'll come back with the gear. Basically, this is three pieces. Here's your central piece. That piece there actually drives the take-up spool. That's what those two lugs do. It's driven by friction. It's a spring here that sits in a notch and that is connected by friction to the outside piece, the gear with the teeth on it. And that is what's driven by the film advance. Right, back in a minute. Right, I'm back. I've applied some grease in here. That's a high pressure grease loaded with uh, molybdenum, I believe. And uh, it's a bit gooey for a lot of things, but it works well for this purpose. So what I do here is make sure that tab is lying in that notch. Use these crimping pliers to grasp it. See if I can get that to sit back where it should do. No, it's a bit tricky this game. Particularly now I've got my hands all greasy. That sits in there. Alright. Now, you can see that spring sticking out, but of course I can't get it into the cylinder like that. Now the tab's dropped out of its slot again. That's better. So I've got to wind this round carefully so that the jaws are holding that spring in place and the outer barrel just goes over the top and pushes down that's trapped in now that clutch will move two ways but it's much freer one way and that is the way that it's actually used that's the way it will turn if you're winding your film back into your cassette so the other way doesn't matter right so much for that A little bit of this grease, this is the uh, synthetic grease, just in the centre where this is going to run on the shaft. That gets dropped into place. Normally I just rotate the film sprocket with my thumb until this thing, the two spurs on this drop into place. There they are, done. Next, the top. This is the uh, is what holds the top of the shaft in position so it locates it, stops it flopping about and this gear here couples to the couples to this on the take up spool and it also couples to um, the sprocket wheel the film sprocket 
Because the take-up spool is on a clutch designed to slip as the film builds up on the take-up spool, the metering of the amount of film that gets taken through with each wind is done by the sprocket. Okay, that looks good. Put some in here. That drops in there, down into place. That's great. There are two screws, a plain rounded head one here, again I don't tighten that down until I've got the other one in place, and this one I'll turn that so you can see what's happening. Right, here's a little cylindrical spacer, that's countersunk on one side, countersink must go down. If you mistakenly put countersink up, the screw will travel down into the countersink and it will be tight. This little pawl will be locked, it won't move. All right, so we got the spring and the pole. Go here. Whoopsie. We'll put that with the right way round, I suppose. So I've got to find the hole in the brass mechanism here and the hole in the body below it with the screws, that's why it's a bit awkward. We're away. So I've got that screw partly started. I need to get this spring behind that tab, so I've got to lift it across like just like that. I'm checking that that pawl is sprung loaded and runs smoothly and I'm going to do up those two screws. That should be fine. So we can carry on. I'm just checking to see that the lever here is, is still in position, that the shaft hasn't been pushed down and the levers haven't tucked in underneath it, just to make life awkward. Here we have that main drive gear, put a little bit of grease under that, a little bit in the centre. This drops in, if we rotate it in, it'll pick up that pawl and fall into place. Normally I set it in the straight ahead position like that, do all my building from there. Here's the return spring to this uh, Drive dog part. Nice, put a little smear of grease on there just so it doesn't go rusty. That drives this piece. And that drives, there's the little dog that pushes it around on the top of the film advance shaft. Then we have a washer. Then we have the gear. This gear couples, it drives the shutter cocking rack. And then we have a screw that holds it all together. I'll get that started. And then I'll just turn that in with my tweezers because I can see without looking any further that I've left the screwdriver I need in the other room. So that'll do for the moment. I'll just give that a very slight tweak. I don't want to bugger up my good tweezers. Alright, so far so good. Back to the bottom of the camera. At the bottom 
I'm going to put in the lever for the rewind button. And its job is to lock the rewind button in the up position when you pressed in the rewind button while you wind the film back into the cassette and of course as soon as you operate the advanced lever again this little lever is hit by a post on the advance and swings back and that releases the, uh, the lock on there so that the sprocket is locked to the advance again. So we've got a spring and we've got this step screw here. The shoulders on that screw, one is for the spring, one is for the lever. So I have to make sure that it goes right through all of them, that the lever is free. It's otherwise good. I'll get a nice big screwdriver, tweak that up tight. I have to get this end of the spring here over to here. I can pick it up with my tweezers and move it. That happened. Good. Now we need to put in the sprocket. Here's our sprocket here. This goes into the body. The shaft needs a little bit of grease there. That's where the sprocket will turn on it. When you're rewinding the film, the sprocket is fixed. In fact, the sprocket's fixed to it all the time, but it needs this shaft needs to lift up and down to disengage this gear. So here we go. Just about to start telling you lies about how the uh, film sprocket could slip on the shaft but that's not entirely true. Right, let's get that shaft down in there. Comes up through the body at the base and we're just going to pull that tab across and then the shaft can go right down and these two gears are engaged. I'm just turning this until the hole in the sprocket shaft comes up here. Because that is where the little drive screw fits. It makes it all work. And all I need to do is recognise the right screwdriver and we'll be in business. That's done. The rewind button can go on next. I'll drop that thing back in place. So we have the rewind button, the washer and the spring. So we've got a little bit of grease here, just on the shaft of this button, not on the threads, otherwise it will help it back out and get lost. Spring goes on, washer goes on. And then that goes on the end of the sprocket shaft down here. I'm going to make sure we don't get the washer trapped so that the button can, the shaft of the button can travel through the washer like that, so that it's not just tied up. I do have a special pair of pliers for this, but this method works pretty good. I'm just using these crimping pliers to hold that and I'm just twisting it. And if this digs into your fingers until it hurts, then that's tight enough. Okay, so now you'll see that the sprocket shaft and the film take-up spool will rotate together. But if I hold one firmly, I can rotate the other because of the slipping of the clutch. That is what we wanted it to do. And so on to the next part. Right, well I've had a chance to uh, tighten up this screw here with my special screwdriver and get my proper pliers out and tighten up this take, um, button on the bottom. So that's all good. So what I'm going to do now is just deal with the bottom of the camera 
and what I need to do is lubricate put some grease on here with this cam rides around these uh, this cam here where this dog driver runs around, runs around there and around here fit the little spring in here that holds the capping plate in position rotate this one full turn to tension it and put a cover plate on there now that'll hold those components in place then I can fit a film advance and then I can carry on working on the rest of the camera at the top so let's be into it before my video camera's battery goes flat or something else goes wrong like it runs out of recording space on the card all the other nuisances so a little bit in there some on there this is a ratchet it ratchets in one direction at the top and when then in another direction underneath I just need to make sure there's a little bit of lubricant where that end of film thing is that would probably do somewhere here of a tiny spring that I need to put in place And it's doing its best to elude me. No, is it here? No. Okay, I'll leave you while I go and find it. Okay, well I found my spring, so I'm ready to carry on, I think. Right, I want to tension that shaft. So I've just swung the end of film lock lever out of the way. I'm going to hold back the film release, I'm going to rotate this shaft one full turn clockwise. And I'll drop back in the end of film lock lever there, that'll hold it in place. My spring drops down in this hole. This is a uh, sawn down cover plate that began its life somewhere else. Oh hang on a minute, let me just do a little change there. I put my, I had a uh, replacement spring there because I couldn't see the original but the original one just popped into view so that was very convenient. This cover can be held on with two screws. This helps keep everything in place and means that we can fit the advance lever temporarily and carry on to fit the cocking rack at the top of the camera and then because this cover plate that I've fitted has been shortened it can stay in place while we fit the shutter which is very handy right so there we go that's in place if we press the release lever that just latches down into place if we hold down the end of film lock lever so it's not interfering with things the film advance works that pops up nice and smooth good return tension that'll work quite nicely so we're done with the bottom of the camera for the moment now at the top of the camera we can tidy things up starting to make it look a bit better I think I'm just out of, out of, just about out of recording time so I'm going to stop that and clear the SD card and then we'll start again okay well now that that's all happy, that the advance is all in place, uh, the base plate, the temporary base plate's on there. This is working nicely. It's time to cover up the top basically. So here we go. There's the chrome trim top plate. That just drops on. 
there's a few components to go up here. None of these are particularly critical to the uh, mechanism at this stage. But there, this was handy just because it holds the top plate on. So I've got my strap plug for this end. Two screws. I'll pop that in place. While we're dealing with uh, bits and pieces like this, you might just as well do the rewind knob and the uh, plate co cover plate at the bottom there too, the tripod socket, but rewind knob first. So there's our outer. Unlike the Retina 3C, the shaft is not a two-piece arrangement, it's a single piece. There's a little brass collar in here, that's what provides the, the detent or the the grip on this thing so it, uh, the shaft doesn't slop around too much. So I'll put a bit of grease in there, wipe the excess off, that drops onto the top plate there. Two countersunk head screws, nice shiny ones because they haven't been used for anything dirty and greasy. Should probably swap hands here. I'm right handed, so I should be using my screwdriver in the other hand. But I've laid my parts out wrong, so I'm doing it cack handed. Let's swap back. Here we go. That one. That one. That's done nice now. Every time I put press down on this on the bench, of course. The back opens because the rewind button is being pressed in. So we'll deal with that little problem. This little aluminium piece, that's the uh, your film cassette. The end of your film cassette sits in that little recess. That's just sitting in there in the body. Here's our tripod socket. This is fairly commonly loose, this one. I think it's okay on this camera. The last camera we dealt with the... Uh, it was just about wobbling off the camera completely, it was that loose. There are three screws for this. Medium length, some plain shaft left on the screw, countersunk heads. Much... Not the longest screws, the three longest screws with that description hold the advance lever on. And four screws slightly shorter than this and threaded the entire sh shaft hold the front plate to the body. But you'll have taken great note of that when you were taking your camera apart and put the screws aside carefully for the right pieces. Okay, so now I can bang it on the desk and it won't open the back. That's ideal. Oh, I think cocking rack and parts would go on here now. So, the cocking rack goes in here. So I'll apply a little bit of grease. Pop that there. Both faces there. A little bit underneath. A little bit on the top. On this face, underneath here, that should do nicely. The position of this, usually it's just in, like that. Just the last tooth is really engaged there. There we've got our spacer bush. Here's our strap lug. Now this screw goes through there, it's got a plain shank at the top. That supports that bush and the bush in turn keeps the rack firmly engaged with the gear on the top of the shaft. 
one screw here here we've got this clamp down plate it holds that rack down firmly it's more elaborate than on later models by the time they got to the reflex 4 it was reduced to just a plain steel plate this has got a nice roller on it so I'm just running a bit of grease in there in a traditional way of dealing with rollers I've just forced that in with my finger just like packing uh, wheel bearings with grease for those of you who remember things like that All right. the longer of the screws goes here The screw in this position is the same as the screw here, and these two screws here. This one with a broader head and shorter shaft fits there. And I'll check those four screws holding the rack down are all firm. We push down the film the release lever hold down the end of film lock and crank this and the advance cranks smoothly the rack moves backwards and forwards that's ideal I'll just see a stray piece here that I'll put on at the moment this little standoff that fits there and that standoff is what the that holds up the top of the body at that position I'll just tweak that snug and I was very careful to make sure I didn't overdo that because it's only got a small screw thread on the bottom and it would just snap off right what's our next task on this let me see oh yes we've got to fit the meter but before we fit the meter um, we put in the shutter release button and the film release button the meter sits on the top and then we have all the fun of threading up the meter and putting on the drum at the bottom connecting it up to that now that's a bit of a task so I'll be doing that in stages